The Cowardly Lion When I think about my childhood, I see courage. When my father called my name, it took courage each time to respond to him. Of course, I didn't have a choice, but I still honor the courage it took to respond. When I attended school and was made fun of for my weight and my unkept appearance, it took courage to go each day and not completely hate myself. Every night I showed up at a dinner table and sat with a mother who never looked at me and probably would have been happier if I was at someone else's table. That took great strength. I kept a sense of humor when I could. That also took courage. Where was the courage of my father or my mother? What strength did it take to mastermind the control of children? They were bullies who habitually caused harm to the members of their household. It's what they used to hide their fear. The sins of the flesh are bad, but they are the least bad of all sins. All the worst worst pleasures are purely spiritual. The pleasure of putting other people in the wrong, of bossing and patronizing and spoiling sport and backbiting, and the pleasures of power, of hatred. For there are two things inside me competing with a human self, which I must try to become. They are the animal self and the diabolical self. The diabolical self is the worst of the two. That is why a cold, self-righteous prig who goes regularly to church may be far nearer to hell than a prostitute. But of course, it's better to be neither. That's a quote from C.S. Lewis from Mere Christianity. It took no strength for them to give into every self-indulgent, diabolical act they wanted. They were cold, self-righteous prigs. Their attendance at church brought them closer to hell than God. I'm not the coward in this story. They are.